Good morning. Hey, thanks, Jeff, for the uh, for the opportunity for for me to spend a little bit of time with uh, with you and uh, our audience of employers uh, for uh, recruiters for for students to talk about our engineering technology innovation management program, which I will refer to as ETEM as we move um, through the uh, through the presentation. Um, if you see there right, just right at you, which is really quite bold is lead bold. And we created this probably two years ago. And I will say that given today's challenges from the pandemic to how do we integrate in emerging technologies and new skills and talents that organization needs, organizations need, the, the lead bold is, is quite uh, appropriate and, and our focus, as you as you see here on the screen, is to prepare, prepare the next generation of engineers and scientists who can lead the innovation projects process and also manage the value creation. Ideas without the capturing is just ideas or in, inventions, and so we we focus on that full uh, ecosystem. Um, I provide this uh, introduction to the audience, not just to talk about me, but to really talk about how uh, we think about the program. So if you'll, you'll see, I have an, an academic uh, background. I've taught at Washington University in St. Louis where I did my PhD work, taught there for eight to nine years in the School of Business and the School of Engineering. But I've also taught here at Carnegie Mellon for the last uh, 10 years. So uh, a reasonable amount of academic educational kinds of experience. But you'll also see that I've also spent quite a bit of time in industry. I'm not that old, okay? But I've spent quite a bit of time in, in industry. My last assignment is global vice president for engineering for about a $5 billion a company and then director of research and other levels of responsibility within the Boeing, responsibilities within the, the Boeing company and with Alcoa. So I think that I have a sense of, hey, what are the needs for industry and how are they involving? And I do consulting now, so I stay uh, engaged. How, what are those needs and how are those needs involving? And then also equally important is what are those key academic technical kinds of framework, strategy frameworks that our students need to understand and be able to deploy for your types of organizations for them to be successful and you to be pleased with the talent that, that we are developing. Uh, and I think as I, as I talked earlier, leading bold and given the current environment that we have uh, we're intensifying our focus. And so we're talking to students and organizations from a global perspective uh, to understand what their challenges are and how that can influence how we shape the educational experience for our students in ETIM. What do we talk about and what do our students uh, have to know? Well, I'll just take a couple pointers. Certainly you'll know that from these mega trends, we could talk for quite a, quite a long time, but what's key driving forces? Tech, we go from lots of technology and data to what? Autonomous systems and data, which requires a totally different approach and framework. Certainly you leverage what you've learned from the technology and data perspective, but how do you solve these autonomous systems data requirements and work those is a totally different kind of, of, uh, of challenge. Just to, to pick another example, if we look at, we go from understanding the process to really understanding the ecosystem. What do we understand and what do we want our students to focus on? We want our students to focus on that you have to develop solutions that solve for the ecosystem not ones that give you a part of it and not the other part. So a good example would be if you look at autonomous systems uh, today, the technology, the prototyping, the development from that perspective, I think it's doing well. There are certainly other things to be done, but it's really progressing. But if we, when we look at it from a policy perspective, which is equally important, we're, we're lagging. And so 
uh, addressing those needs or understanding the need to address those says that our students are not only going to get at what are the technological kinds of solutions, but how do we engage and partner with folks from a policy standpoint such that our customers or your customers get a fully more optimized kinds of solution. Um, this, this process was developed by IBM several, several years ago, but I think that here's a, this is really even more important today. And what is that? It is that this front end knowledge acquisition part is important. So it's not about, and what I tell my, my students, hope is not a strategy. So you toss something or you, the first, the idea or opportunity come, you, you pick that up, but they need to really understand which strategic frameworks are important. Are you implying, applying game theory? Are you applying institutional theory? Which ones make sense for the current situation? Understand that and then apply that. That's a speed issue and a speed challenge. And I think this is really important capability that I, our students will bring to your organization uh, and I think can uh, help an organization as it's, it's on this, this, uh, this relevancy journey. So uh, this is a statement by Rebecca Henderson. She was at MIT when I did quite a bit of work with Virginia now at Harvard, but this big challenge is what? It's difficult for established firms. Why? One of the big challenges we're we're in the you know established firms are in the business of generating cash, uh, and and supporting some of these activities. Now, the challenge is not only do you have to generate cash, but you have to thoughtfully invest in these next generation disruptive kinds of technologies. You have to make smart choices up front, which relates back to my previous slide. So we want to prepare our students to be able to do this. So we look at it. I talked about the ecosystem. This just gives you an example of how we start to think about these uh, and talk to our students about emerging technologies and how you integrate them across the full ecosystem. So you'll see ones from the financial perspective, Internet of, of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, how it's going to drive new revenue. We'll look at internal processes and cost optimization and how you leverage artificial intelligence. And uh, <clears throat> so as you start to see, we do challenge our students to look at how these emerging technologies is going to impact even your full business system and be able to articulate this to your customers and your, your challenges. Now, this, this, the point for this slide is to say that so our students look at, hey, they understand we, we're in the business of generating cash, which is this current portfolio, 70% of it is core and incremental, 20% uh, is breakthrough and 10% is transformational. But what they also know and have experienced, and we, we've given them examples and worked through the organizational kinds of in case studies and things, is that over time, this portfolio flips and, and this, these 10, 20%, and you don't have to be successful on 100% of those, but these 10 and 20% flips this to the 70%. So this says that over time, you ensure that you are relevant and we want our students to absolutely understand that. Busy slide, but the intent is just to deliver, you know, a really clear message. The, the, the criteria, capability, and the leadership management process for incremental or core kinds of projects are much different than those for breakthrough and transformational. Where we've seen failure from an organizational perspective is where organizations try to manage these two types of projects the same way they've managed the incremental. We spend time with our students to understand those differences and make sure that we as, as on the front end, we set ourselves up and position ourselves for success. Uh, just a little bit of the shifting bit, a little bit of the details about our program. We offer a one-year full-time master's program. Our students begin, begin in the spring semester, which is January. Uh, they complete their core requirements, which I'll talk about. They have their internship and then they do their final semester and, and which allows them to really focus on those areas where 
uh, <clears throat> they want to have some expertise. We have a two year dual degree program. So that means that our engineers and scientists can do what? Get a master's in mechanical, chemical, civil, uh, et cetera, can get a master's in those programs and, can, and then the next semester get a master's in the uh, ETIM program. I would say that 50% of our students uh, participate in this program. One of the other par uh, programs, part of our program that we're really putting some time into and some emphasis in is our part-time program. Well, the benefit of our part-time program is number one, we have working professionals. Now, the other benefit of that is that what? These working professionals are on teams with our students, some of them coming directly from undergrad and some of them having one to two years experience. They're working with folks who have three, five, seven, nine years of experience. And I think it makes for a much more, uh, I think, vibrant learning experience for, uh, for these students. So right now, I think we have four of those students in our program. Ideally, four to eight would be, would be um, good, and that's our target, but we really like this mix of, um, of the working professionals. So if you have folks in your organization you think would be good, we are happy to talk to them. We also have a two-year uh, integrated studies program in computer science, which is similar to our dual degree, which means that you'll spend, what, a year with the ETIM program and then a year with the School of uh, Computer Science. And this is just based on just a growing demand for the, the, the folks who have the computer science degree who also want to have the innovation management background. So we think that's a really nice, nice mix. Uh, just want to give you a, just want to give you insight and or some insights into uh, our program. The first semester, our students focus on the core, which means that these are the classes that we've determined that are critical and capabilities and skills and insights that all of our students must have. Uh, and so you'll see in the seminar, I teach the innovation management part. I think lots of people talk about innovation management, not as many understand it to the level that I think is important to be impactful. So we spend a semester on the innovation management process. Um, <clears throat> data science, I, I think I need not go into the details there, but it is critical and an important part that we've added to our program. And I mentioned earlier, what strategy, when, whether you're gonna do institutional theory, game theory, or resource-based theory around this, they've spent a full semester understanding this. And we do require them to take a project course, which is, um, them working to solve key industry problems uh, from a teaming uh, perspective. Our students also get, what, 24 units in innovation management through across the different colleges at Carnegie Mellon. You'll see here Tepper, Hines, Dietrich. Uh, and then they get the technical elective. So they can take a technical elective in the School of, uh, of Engineering or in the com uh, School of Computer science and as I talked about earlier, being able to address this full ecosystem, our students can and do take public policy uh, courses. Uh, and then the last part, which I mentioned earlier, is our internship practicum, which we certainly want you as, uh, as recruiters and employers to, to hire our talented um, students for your uh, organization. I just wanna uh, just spend just a little bit, just, a, just an extra minute on this internship. What's really important for our students. And so I, you know, as you think about the hiring, I want our students, some of our students are pivoting. They're going from being just a material science engineer to um, they wanna do more of the analytical analytics kinds of things. And so they're pivoting. So um, some of them, uh, we, we want them to use this internship time to really go validate that and really go leverage what they've learned during these uh, core classes and learn those with uh, from your company. So there's, I think there's a, <clears throat> I want this to be a benefit on both sides. I want our students to get to go explore these areas of interest. And then I want you to be able to benefit from 
from what they've learned. And also you can make choices about, hey, I we really like that student. Um, Full-time employment is a much lower uh, risk kinds of proposition. Uh, our faculty, not to just go through all the names, but the key theme here is that we have, we have a very, I think a very good mix of, of professors teaching in our program, meaning that we have a good mix of academic professors, Daniel's ac uh, academic, Dr. Cohen, who was a former president of Carnegie Mellon, teaches from an academic perspective, Jeremy and some of the others do the academic, but we also have practitioners. Jim Baradone is a product management practitioner. So he lectures and teaches in our program. Mark DeSantis, is a, is a practitioner. He teaches our entrepreneur in the entrepreneurship section. He has done three, two to three startups and he's, he's leading another and then he teaches his class. So this is the mix that we have uh, for our students. And we also have folks uh, working in industry. Sharak Patel is, is um, uh, leading the uh, foundry organization for Ernst Young. So we try to have this really good mix uh, for, um, for our students. I talked about the, the second part of the semester. So the first part, we really focus on getting the fundamentals uh, in the ETIM program. The second semester, we, our students will have what? Gone through the fundamentals, number two, done an internship. And then when they come back, then now they can take classes in areas of focus. Uh, I think the one thing we want to protect is Carnegie Mellon offers lots of options. And we want to make sure that when our students are talking to you and our other recruitment and, and hiring firms is that if you want a consultant, they have taken some of the consulting classes at Carnegie Mellon, as opposed to have taken a lot of different classes, they'll, they'll have some, uh, some expertise. So we created the five tracks within uh, ETIM. The other thing I do want to say is you'll find students who will have what? Some combination of, 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 of analytics or ana um, analytics side and then entrepreneur or product management and the analytics. So uh, it's, it's based on the interests of the students and what, what drives them and what they are most interested in doing. I've talked about the internship program. It's, it's, it's one, we want the students to be able to prepare for the real world. And that's one thing that, that, um, that I would, uh, would underline. Uh, our targeted mix, so if you're thinking about, hey, are these students right for our organization? I think that all of you can find yourself somewhere in this mix where there's a startup or existing established companies. Our students go global. And as you can see from this slide, our students have internships all over the world and it's the way it should be. And then I think a reasonable amount of our students are local in, um, in, in Pittsburgh. And so um, I think, like I said, I think you can find yourself there. Um, I won't um, just go into the details, but I just want to give you a, a sample view of the, the capstone project, which they do in their final semester. And this is really for them to take an opportunity to bring all of what they have learned together and then go apply, apply it on a project and a real project. So all of the projects that we have come from organizations like yourselves. Um, this was a project that was in 2019 that the students um, executed in 2019. Their, their job is to invest the, feasib the, the feasibility. So to say to the organizations, yes, you should go forward. And I also challenge them to say, no, you should not. It should be paused until the technology readiness level increases or market, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I want them to really deal with uh, real challenges and uh, the real problems uh, that, that, that in organizations, that organizations might have. So uh, uh, this slide here gives you this fuel, full view of how I get them to think about uh, the ecosystem. And this is actually one of the slides from their presentation. Uh, the other thing to take away is not, a, the, I don't want them to have a thousand words. I want them to be able to tell a, a story. And I think there's a story to be told here um, in, uh, in this slide. So uh, as, I, as I wrap up, 
I think for organizations and what we impress on our students, obtaining a leadership position in industry is not easy to get, nor is it easy to maintain. And the only way to do that is to be able to continue to look at your dominant business model and the technology and continue to be, to be comfortable dealing with the change that's associated with it, have the tools, the strategies, the framework, and the background to, to, uh, to execute on this. And, and I'll just end with, um, we'll continue to intensify our focus on educating that next generation of, of innovation leaders. Thank you for your um, time. And um, uh, you see here at the bottom, I'm happy, this is my email address, I'm happy to, to respond to any inquiries or questions that you might have. And also Jenny Hurst, who, who, who uh, works with our students from when they come into the program, revising their, their, um, their resumes such that they are succinct and to the point, all the way to helping them to, to uh, through the interviewing process and the application process with your organization. Uh, Jenny is also available and there's her, her email there, uh, email address there. Thank you so much for your time and we look forward to hearing from you.